ఓం శ్రీ సాయిరాం ఓం శ్రీ సాయినాథాయ నమ ఓం శ్రీ సాయి పరబ్రహ్మణే నమ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు టాక్ అబౌట్ సాయి సచరిత అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ అ స్పెషల్ అకేషన్ ఆఫ్ ది హండ్రెడ్ ఇయర్స్ సెలబ్రేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ బాబా మహా సమాధి ఉత్సవాస్ and uh, based on that uh, throughout the year lot of sai bandhus are going to do the parayana of uh, sai sacharita and uh, they they've been doing lot of uh, programs related to that so in a similar kind of uh, effort with sai blessings we are going to talk about sai sacharita take one chapter at a time and uh, see what we can learn from each chapter in relation to what baba wanted us to learn and before we do that let us prostrate to our parama guru who is the supreme soul and who is the embodiment of all the great qualities of divinity we will make every effort to walk the path that sai showed and ask sai to give us the strength to do so first we need to understand the sai's path then only we can follow that path what is really the truth that needs to be experienced and why the name sacharita was given sacharita means the story of the truth that is why Sai gave us this great scripture. Even we tend to read this for materialistic gains, but in the end, it will make us realize the truth. Baba used to encourage his devotees to read Guru Charitra at that time so that they can realize the truth. And by reading the, about the great gurus, you see their lives how they influenced different people or devotees that come along their path so in that way we also change our lives by learning about great gurus who really sai is who is sai really is he god is he a guru is he a peer who muslims worship who is he really people different people saw him differently and even now i mean we worship him in a different ways sai never talked about his birth or his greatness it's all about his devotees all the time how they can cross this great great difficulty in life we might have read the biographies of great saints but we do not talk about his biography his main focus was to make us walk towards the ultimate truth there could be so many religions in this world and uh, each religion have expressed their own views about how god is how god looks what god does where he stays those kind of things i mean people try to preach us and teach us they might have showed us different paths but which is the right way how do we decide which is the right path god is not limited to just one path if he is limited to one path or if we say he or she we're limiting god's infiniteness and all the paths lead us towards god the essence of truth is same no matter which religion we follow and whatever the teaching might be baba showed this truth by living sai never stuck to one kind of worship or one kind of form he encouraged people to grow in their belief system but the main thing he taught was having a fundamental principle of belief in what you believe so <clears throat> baba showed this truth by living Sai Sacharita shows this truth through routine incidents 
of regular routine devotees. And this was shown even in the first chapter itself. And this is all seen as miracles of Sai, but through his devotees. We cannot even imagine how these incidents take place and how we meet our Guru. Every devotee feels so special and thinks that Sai belongs to them and he is doing something special to them. When Hemad Pant started the Sri Sai Sacharita, he praised Sai as the embodiment of all the gods and beyond all the three qualities. He is the only one who can lead us through the sea of life. When he was visiting Shirdi in 1910, he saw Baba trying to grind wheat so that he can use this flour to spread in the outskirts of the village so that they can get rid of the cholera that was killing a lot of people at that time. By watching this special circumstance, Hemad Pant had the prerana, that is the inner urge, inner vision to write about Baba. But what is the relation between the wheat flower and him writing the Sai Satcharita? Satcharita says, Baba always was grinding the hand mill but trying to grind our sins. When he was grinding wheat, there were some ladies who took over the grinding job and wanted to share the flour because Baba didn't have any kids, didn't have any family, so what Baba is going to do with this? So that's why they wanted to take it and they divided that flour into four parts. These four parts were nothing but mind, chitta, buddhi and ahankara, that is the ego. All the impressions are hidden in this faculty of mind. Only a guru can plant a seed of wisdom. When this flower was asked to be spread at the outskirts of the village, Baba is reminding that we cannot let the outward objects other than God should enter into our psyche. Our mind should be turned inward, not outwards. This is the real yoga. This is the real sadhana. That's why this great book is called Satcharita, as it shows the real path to reach God by shunning the mind. Sri Sai Satcharita shows us how to purify our inner mind by using karma, bhakti and jnana yogas all put together. This will also show us how to live our lives effectively. Sai Bandhus, let us make the Sai Satcharita a part of our life and walk the walk that Sai showed us. It is so amazing to watch how this miracle happens in everyone's life. And to make this happen, we have to offer our heart to Sai. We have to internalize the Sraddha and Saburi. These are going to be our mantras. Then the truth will reveal itself from inside us. This is what really Sai wanted us to do. And surrender ourselves with a heart full of love. So Sai Bandhus, this whole year, let us start reading and studying and learning Sai Satcharita's greatness. Even if we can read a paragraph, even if we read a page or a chapter per week, any time possible, whenever you can do, let's start doing this Mahayagna. And uh, let's have Sai's blessing for this. Om Sri Sai Ram, Om Sri Sai Nathai Namaha, Om Sri Sai Parabrahmane Namaha, Om Sri Sachidananda Sadguru Sainad Maharaj Ki Jai.